Americans, we'd see in excess of 80% of Americans saying that they want that 30-year fixed reserve. And I also imagine that I heard you say something very interesting, which, which was you're not a big fan of mortgage interest tax deduction. And again, try to run on that as a platform. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying that too. That's why I didn't propose eliminating, because that's a much more difficult political game. But I think there may be enough to try to get some resolution to Fannie and Freddie, which today are unlimited drains on the taxpayer's dime. And I see the moves being done in the last few days, which is essentially the same stuff. Subsidize home ownership, even though the recession uh, rates are still the same. The big um, mortgage subsidy to try to keep people in their homes didn't work. Or at least the unit cost of 400000 it did. It was astronomical. All it does is delay it for six months. So these things are just sending good money after bad, and I think somewhere along the line you've got to stop that. I just took things that are kind of one tiny in nature. I understand that Social Security and Medicare are much more difficult. My own view on that is we have made a promise, for good or for bad, for people who rely upon it throughout their lives. You can't change it for those out of your retirement or in it. You have the luxury of time. That's the only answer to this. So you deal with the phase of over many decades. That's the only answer I can see for those. But I didn't touch those at least. These are one-time events that could be doubled, I think, in the more encapsulated form. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad we ended on that note, because I, I don't think I agreed with uh, with everything you said, but I certainly agreed with uh, a lot of what you said, and, and appreciate the way in which you say it. And, and I want to close on this note. You know, like all of my town hall meetings in a moment of national crisis, uh, there are a lot of different opinions in the room. There's a lot of passion. There's a lot of emotion. I actually don't mind. Gentlemen asked me if I'm wearing Kevlar. I actually think that uh, people angry, uh, happy, unhappy, loud, not loud in town hall meetings is a sign of the vibrancy of our democracy in a very, very difficult time. So with that as prologue, I just want to say thank you very much for taking the time, for sticking with us for, uh, for uh, I think, in excess of two hours for this very, very important discussion. Again, uh, I wake up every morning reminded of the fact that my title is representative, and somebody said, why don't you just do these things? Why aren't you saying, look, my job is to listen and to convey your thoughts and ideas, which are in many cases very contradictory uh, to the floor of the United States Congress. So thank you very, very much uh, for attending tonight, your thoughts, ideas, suggestions, and most importantly, for participating in our democracy. Good night. Wait, wait, wait. Bush tax cuts. I promised I would say where I am on the Bush tax cuts, and I'd be lucky to do it as somebody reminds Here's where I am right now. I think that for under $250,000 households to individuals under $200,000, I think we need to contemplate at least a one or two year extension in those uh, tax cuts. But the last thing we need to do now is take dollars out of the pocket of our middle class. On the ones that are in excess of $250,000, I'm still looking at it. Uh, I would say let them expire, but for one thing, which is that there are a lot of small businesses running uh, their tax returns into personal tax returns at that level, and so, <laughs> gentlemen here, so uh, I need to look at that small business. Thank you. Thank you.